You've seen the news, this is the new iPhone SE, but its arrival means that Apple now sells three phones that to a lot of people will look confusingly similar. The $399 SE from 2020, the $699 iPhone 11 from 2019, and the $599 iPhone XR from 2018. So the question then becomes, does this new $399 iPhone effectively make its more expensive brothers redundant? Should everyone who wants to buy an iPhone just go and grab the SE? Well, if we kick things off with video quality, it's off to a very good start, that's for sure. If your primary use for your camera is to record footage, on first impression, this iPhone SE seems every bit as good as the iPhone 11. And considering that the iPhone 11 is already the best camera for video at $700, that makes this new SE seemingly staggering value for its $399 price point. But there's something you need to understand for this comparison to make sense. The iPhone XR on the far right is a phone from 2018, so it's using Apple's older camera sensor combined with older processing power. The iPhone 11 in the middle is the best of both worlds. It's got the latest camera system and their most up-to-date processor. But this new iPhone SE is a hybrid. It's got very similar camera hardware to the older 2018 XR, but it has the chipset and the power of the newer 2019 iPhone 11. So does this extra power it has over the iPhone XR make its camera more capable? Well, sort of. All three phones can shoot at 4K resolution, and they all use something called Smart HDR, which is basically Apple's way of saying that we can make sure all parts of the image are well exposed. But the iPhone SE and the iPhone 11, thanks to having the most up-to-date chips, have a more advanced version of this. The ability to identify every single object in a scene and then make sure that each individually is correctly exposed. Can you tell though? With difficulty. If you look at my arms in this scene here, the SE and the 11, they have managed to more correctly process my real skin tone. 10R is coming out as a little red, but apart from that, I can't see a single difference. The lighting, the building in the background, it's all pretty much the same. To be clear though, this is less about picking faults with the newer phones and more about just appreciating how well the older 2018 iPhone 10R is holding up. I even put these phones through the most challenging test, which is just facing directly towards the sun, and all three can still correctly expose their subjects. And it genuinely feels like I've recorded these clips on the same phone three times, which, to reiterate, is good news for this cheaper iPhone SE. These aren't perfect phones, we'll come to that, but as far as recording video during the day, you can't go too far wrong here. And that includes optical image stabilization. All three phones have it, and it does a good job of minimizing the bumps and shakes as you're walking around. The one caveat of it is that if you tried to run using these phones, the quality deteriorates. It does seem though like the two phones on the left have improved in this aspect versus the older 10R. If you really care about stability, you can lower the recording resolution to 1080p and it improves, but it's still not amazing. These phones aren't really made to be kind of running around with and recording. What about photos? I almost feel like I need to clarify here. No, I haven't just taken one photo and pasted it three times. These are three different generations of device, but the output is consistent to the point where I had to stop and check. Like if I jumbled up the photos taken on these three phones, almost everyone would struggle to guess which photo has come from which device. There are differences, but in the day at least, all three iPhones breeze through, managing to strike that balance between having a bright image, but not so bright that you start to lose details in places like the sky. Colors are realistic, skin tones, the color of flowers, and greenery is all represented well in a way that feels true to life. A lot of people would consider the iPhone 11 to capture some of the best dynamic range for its nearly $700 price. So the fact that this SE is capturing photos that look indistinguishable to most eyes means that it's going to be competitive for $399. At least it is during the daytime. I did also notice a couple of cases where it looks like the more powerful chip in the iPhone SE is doing a bit of work here. For example, pointing directly at the sun, it can better control the highlights than the older 10R, but not as well as the 11. And also it's better in terms of resolving detail. If you crop into this shot here, you can probably see that the two recent iPhones can bring out ever so slightly more sharpness and clarity in a scene. But yeah, we're not talking generational leaps here, small refinements. All three have similar sensors and an identical aperture of f1.8, so the photos have more or less the same level of natural background blur when you get up close to your subject. But speaking of background blur, portrait mode has some differences. 
All three phones can use facial recognition to take portrait mode photos of people. And this is something iPhones have historically excelled at. I do generally prefer the way portrait mode photos look when they're taken on a phone's telephoto camera. Because here, for example, none of these phones have a telephoto camera. So you have to go right up close to someone's face to take a portrait mode shot. And that creates a little bit of distortion. But given the hardware we're working with, the software's doing a good job here. But worth bearing in mind is that the iPhone SE and the XR, they only have one camera compared to the iPhone 11's dual cameras. And those two cameras mean that the iPhone 11 can naturally detect the depth of all objects, not just faces. So as well as people, on the iPhone 11 you can take portrait mode shots of anything, of bottles, of basketball nets, of leaves. You can make this a subtle effect or you can go a bit nuts with it. If you try to do this on the other two phones, you'll just get an error message that no face is present. Now, here is where iPhone 11 starts to really pull ahead. It can take night mode photos, and the difference between this and the other two is noticeable if you're in medium lighting conditions, but becomes more and more noticeable the darker it gets. If we lower further, to the point where I was struggling to see the objects that were sitting under the desk, then the iPhone SE and XR, they're also struggling to see, but the iPhone 11 actually keeps a lot of the detail that it had when the scene was more well lit. If you fancy yourself as a night photographer and iPhone is the route you want to go down, then it's pretty simple. The 11 or the 11 Pro are a generational leap ahead. I kind of wish Apple had added night mode to the SE. It's definitely possible given that the phone has the latest chipset, but I'm guessing that because the end result would have been a halfway house, not as clean as it is on the iPhone 11, Apple wouldn't want to damage the reputation of its night mode. The smaller flash module on the back of the SE was also initially worrying to me, but it's actually fine. It can still fill a pitch black room with light and still take crispy shots, albeit with slightly more noise than on the iPhone 11. Now, quite possibly the biggest advantage of the 11's camera, I'd say even more important than night mode, is the addition of an ultra wide lens. It allows you to capture wider, more dramatic shots. And I'll be honest, since we started seeing ultra wide cameras on phones, I find myself reaching for this option probably 30% of the time. So it's a real shame to see it's not present on the SE. It's kind of important for video too, with the ultra wide, you get that same dramatization, but in motion. For example, there's been quite a few times actually where I've tried to give someone an idea of the amount of space in a room. And in cases like these, the ultra wide captures in a way that your normal main camera just can't. None of these phones, as I mentioned, have a telephoto camera. So the quality deteriorates fairly fast if you start zooming in. All three phones can take slow motion video at 1080p at two different frame rates. 120 frames per second, which is pretty slow. And as far as quality is concerned, there's a noticeable hit compared to recording normal video, but this is still some of the better looking slow-mo footage out there. They can all also shoot at 240 frames per second, or in other words, twice as slow. This is the mode I tend to keep my phone on, but you face a further quality trade-off. It's very slow, but also bear in mind that there are phones out there that can take like 7,000 frame per second slow-mo footage, so compared to that, this isn't the slowest. The iPhone 11 can also do this exact thing, but on the front camera, and it works well. I'm just not sure who actually uses it or what even a good use case of it would be. But more importantly, the reason the iPhone 11 can do that is because its selfie camera is better. The new SE comes with the same seven megapixel front facing camera as the XR, which is to say it's fine, but it's not as good. As far as video is concerned, for example, it's good to see that it can go wider than the XR, but both the SE and XR are stuck with 1080p video, whereas the 11 can take full quality 4K on the front. That's a huge gap in resolution. Bear in mind though that most social media sites, for example, they're gonna compress your video quite heavily. So if your main purpose for taking front-facing video is just to put on an Instagram story, it probably doesn't matter. But one thing you can probably tell here is that the 11's front camera also has better dynamic range. While the sky on the other two phones becomes almost completely white when the sun is in frame, the iPhone 11 actually controls that brightness really well. As far as photos are concerned, the quality difference is much less noticeable. The main differentiator is actually that with one tap, the iPhone 11 can go almost ultra wide. And I personally think this is quite important, or at least this is a feature I would have liked to see on the SE, because if you want to take a group shot on that phone or the XR, you'll probably need a selfie stick. 
they can all do portrait mode on the front too. And it's good to see that even though the iPhone SE doesn't have the depth cameras that the other phones do, it doesn't seem to have impacted edge detection. And you will see that the new phones do a better job of identifying and brightening my face than the XR. And this has the side effect of better low light performance too. Slightly. So, in conclusion, the iPhone SE camera, it trades versatility for reliability. There are a whole sea of Android phones at $400 that can do more. They have ultra-wide cameras, they have zoom cameras, some can take brighter photos in extremely dark environments. But as far as having a camera that I've been able to rely on, as far as having a camera that I could just hand to a random stranger to take a photo of me and trust that there'll be a good result from it, no other $400 phone I've tried so far is quite as good as this. It's pretty good at everything and extremely good at video, to the point where for most people, as far as the camera is concerned, the existence of this new SE all but invalidates the 10R. It's the same in most cases, but cheaper and sometimes better. That said, the iPhone 11 still definitely has a place. There's quite a few areas where that camera shines above the SE, like its night mode, or its ultra-wide camera, or its far better front camera. Thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoyed this, a sub would be massively appreciated. My name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'll catch you in the next one.